I thank the organizer for this opportunity. Really, it is uh, good that uh, I am speaking after some time because already we have discussed a lot. So, yeah, in the subject, it is not uh, difficult to enter, and these uh, audience are more aware than the speakers. So, it is uh, also uh, easier for me to make my things easier for myself. So uh, this is uh, really in the context of already you have discussed and uh, my friend already, uh, Majumdar, he has already told the importance of this flow, stream flow, this intensity, rainfall intensity, etc. So in the context of runoff we have done and it is a little easier to model the runoff but coming to this management then it is really difficult to model the uh, sediment flow because the way the government of India has taken the program, this watershed program, we cannot back it. So you like it or not, it is really a good program. And if you want any change, any climate change mitigation or, or adaptation, you have to take, in, take board on that because it is a formal program. So adaptation, if it has to be upscaled in a very systematic manner, then automatically you will have some mitigation. Strategy. So mitigation cannot be done without adaptation and we cannot wait for a maturity of our thinking. We have to do something, some action has to continue and as this food security bill has passed, that means this act is going to come and it has come already. So as uh, Dr. Gargill has told that there is really a very big gap and if you really bridge that gap with the technology, technology is available, if we really bridge the gap, maybe we will be in a better position, then we may go towards uh, uh, improving of GDP as well as this uh, gross environmental product also, we are talking of GEP also nowadays than GDP, which is more climate friendly. So this is the ch change analysis and project prediction of runoff, erosion, sediment loss and this. So here if you see the thing, this thing is so complex that and the science is evolving so that our thinking process is also changing. We cannot tell that uh, science is wrong or right. It is a process of evolution and it is evolving. So previously we were talking about scenarios. Now we are talking of RCPs. So like that the things are coming and whatever we are getting from the upstream research we are taking it and analyzing in our terms and seeing how it will be beneficial to the community. So you, we are in between. It is as a research institute in Indian Council of Agriculture Research, we are an intermediary institution where we take some upstream research and do some work on that and see that it is beneficial to the community. And from the community in turn, whatever they give, it should be beneficial to the society as well as to the environment. So if this cycle can be done in a more balanced way, then we will be more climate friendly and there is no pro if we are climate friendly, so we, we need not change for climate change. So the techniques what we develop or what we adopt or what we do, it should be friendly to the society and to the climate. So that is the philosophy with which we should work so that we can face any difficulties due to climate change. So this is when this coming, these are the factors, one is topography, geology and soils. It is a factor of spatial variation. Then climate is a, is a factor of changing climate. It is not a simple climate, it is a factor of function of changing climate. So precipitation, amount, intensity, temperature, then evaporation comes. It is again a factor of precipitation, temperature, relative. So many things are coming. Then soil moisture is another, is the most difficult thing because it is another variable which depends on many things. Based on that, now we are discussing about land use changes. So that is still more and more difficult because that is again market driven. So sometimes now the change what you are seeing in agriculture, it is mostly market driven than technology driven because if you are seeing more uh, in onion, they will go more onion, then onion price will reduce, then we will have problems. So this is the type of thing we cannot blame the science or technology or agriculture people, anybody, you cannot blame it. It is a blame and we have to take a collective responsibility. 
so then this is the vegetation cover then animal activities is there then as already i have told that the upstream research intermediate analysis and strategic planning downstream implementation so those things so we should see where we fit in maybe institute like indian institute of science they may come under upstream research and also other organization may be come in between then the downstream implementation that is the real people who are in the helm of affairs who really means what they are doing and how they will contribute to the climate if we cannot sensitize those people then whatever we are talking it will be with us it will be with academicians only then analysis of the interaction within and among these factors is complex to project the effects of changing climate scene however simulation is possible with a certain level of simplification so with this complexity we cannot do any model so you have to simplify so how much we can take the simplification with the present level of knowledge maybe tomorrow our knowledge level will be better so we can have a little complex thing so this process is the science which is evolving so this is the thing everybody knows this so this already you have seen this right how this rainfall is changing rainfall intensity is changing and runoff is changing because this is correlated with intensity so if you see in india also we are not away from this scenario so we will have some problem but at the same time somewhere also precipitation decreases also and sometimes we have already discussed that climate change is also good for some countries where maybe production will increase so there is a very difficult scenario we have to analyze from local regional national and global level at different level that reflections and the relative reflections are different so anyway this is indo gangetic plain already we are discussing about irrigation and all because this is the food basket for india so temperature glacier retreat frequency already you have discussed frequency of drought seals all those things are increasing so main important is weather extreme weather event so whatever we are discussing now at least all of us are convinced that there is change in extreme weather event that is being experienced by us and more by our forefathers who are still present so this is the soil erosion model study so many things have been studied relating to runoff and all so like that many studies have been done on erosion aspects runoff erosion aspect same using the same model, models ensembles and all so change in ground ground cover this is one of the very important thing which is re, uh, related to uh, climate change and this changes have a greater impact on both runoff and erosion than changes in the canopy so canopy cover and ground cover there is a little difference so ground cover has more positive impact that means runoff can be reduced more with ground cover than canopy cover but if both changes then it is better that's why there is a very good correlation with forestry so if it is a good forest then there will be less runoff then peak will be reduced and the lean period flow will be increased so that is the good indication for a good environment then coming this climate change impacts on special variability of soil moisture already we had a good discussion but that is also another problem there are so many types of models so if you will see some early model it shows that around 60% 50% deficiency in moisture and some model shows only 2% 3% deficiency in moisture so that means it shows that it is not easy to simulate the moisture particularly in the context of climate change and moisture is having more importance locally not in a temporal scale because it depends on that particular year's runoff rainfall evaporation everything of a particular year and the crop will take in that particular time it is the, that time scale has less importance than the particular season where the crop grows so this is a representation how it changes because this is in belar in karnataka so there we get rainfall particularly the crop season in the black soil we conserve moisture during the kharif and early part of the ravi and the crop season is northeast rainfall so the, here we get the season different it is not regular season of what we get so here if you find this season has changed from september it has gone to october in the last 
a few years. That means one month delay has occurred, but season is ending in November. That means the period has reduced. So we have to have a crop which can take that period so that the suiting the crop to the growing period is very important. So this is the reality the farmers are facing. So these are the type of things which we are really getting. But if you take a global regional model, this picture won't come. Maybe in future, we will get, get a very coarser picture from the um, IPCC and all, so that you can correlate with that. So that means from agricultural point of view, this local climate and local observations are very important for taking any decisions. So this is another thing scenario in Uttarakhand, uh, already you have discussed. So this model shows that rainfall likely to be more 34 to 60 per four percent more during the months, May to September, and decline in rainfall during winter. That means there is a change in system, though rainfall will get more, but the distribution will change. So it will show that where you will have better water harvesting potential, whether if you are having a better rain during May or June, heavy storm comes, let us keep that water, maybe for recharge it will be useful, or some supplemental irrigation will be using. And if we are getting very good rain, Toward the end also, let us store that water and use in the off-season during the Robbie season for irrigation. So this is the trend analysis we are seeing. What we have shown from 57 to 2012 and 83 to 2012. So we made some analysis to see whether the past trend and present trend uh, are same or not. Suppose if both are decreasing, that means really annual rainfall is decreasing. But somewhere it is showing that the monsoon rainfall that is one day maximum it is decreasing previously if you take entire period and if you tell take the last some from 83 to 2012 say then it is increasing that means really the, the here is the change but the trend if both are same means that is really some trend is there with the rainfall or some I'll take some two, three minutes. So this is the return period we have shown. That means this last storm which we got in Uttarakhand, around 700 millimeter in three days. So that is around 600 years return period it comes. That means it is very difficult to account for those type of thing and it won't come from any scenarios in IPCC. So this is the same thing we are seeing. We have taken the rainfall. So how we have analyzed some of say eight water sets and same SWOT model also we have used. We have taken the rainfall and we have analyzed the rainfall, how it has changed for different period from pre-monsoon, monsoon, post-monsoon, post so that we can have scenario for crop cultivation. And those things we put in uh, SWOT model and we have studied a different scenario for uh, difference in runoff and soil loss. So this is another very important thing actually we are this rainfall energy is very important. So we are uh, uh, working with monthly rainfall or daily rainfall, but if we don't consider much which is more important for the erosion, that rainfall erosivity is very important. So little more research, concentrated research is required for doing on rainfall energy. And instead of total rainfall, we can correlate yield with rainfall energy because sometimes same rainfall may come in a few days or more days, but energy will be different. So the energy is a better, maybe a better indicator to correlate with yield. And this is from Gujarat, we have taken another slide, just to show that uh, whatever is predicted from this uh, IPC, the scenarios from ITME we have taken, the scenarios, it is same, but whatever should have come in 2050, it has come now between 2001 and 2010, it has come around 830 millimeter. We are expecting 808 millimeter. That means it has come earlier than what we thought. And if you see the last year, this particular year, from 8 June to 22nd September, we got 512 millimeter of rainfall out of 1000 millimeter. So 600 millimeter has gone to 800 millimeter. Now this year we have got 1000 millimeter. So this is the type of scenario we don't get from this IPC scenario. This is the reality. So this is some of the contingencies. Whenever we get different types of scenarios, we should be prepared to use. So this is an example I have given from Bangalore. So there is no time. And this is the advantage of diversity. So if we are playing with variations, then we don't know what will happen. 
we cannot know what will happen tomorrow so if we are having a different scenarios and different crop type of thing so this is in assam we had in some project of a national uh, climate change project so there we had different types of crops where only they were growing paddy so now we have several crops and really there this uh, cropping intensity has by increased by 300 percent then on runoff and soil erosion this is just all you have known that one and this is just to show some uh, uh, relative changes by change in temperature how this evapotranspiration has changed some studies have come this is from brahmaputra and ganga river basin already there is lot of studies have been done how the runoff and soil loss has changed sediment flow mostly runoff and runoff and this rising rivers this already you have discussed that how the glaciers the, the runoff will increase but these recent study this is with this rcv scenarios now these recent studies august 2013 report this shows that we need not worry now if when this uh, uh, um, glacier flow will reduce then rainfall will take over or runoff will be more so up to 2050 they are telling there will be no problem with water particularly for irrigation in india and particularly in those uh, indus valleys so this is a very good uh, uh, study has been done so this is the effect on soil erosion in other countries they have made how the soil erosion will be there and this is we have done this is soil loss tolerance limit for the country map we have prepared so wherever the potential erosion is more than soil loss tolerance so th those are the critical areas where we should address so these are how the structure soil conservation structure cost will increase with the change in intensity and runoff amount so some studies we have done on that so this is the vulnerability this is we are having in india one very important program of mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme so that is really a very good scheme which according to the findings of the pilot study conducted in chitra in karnataka there is an increase in groundwater level in water percol that means the type of work is done for soil and water conservation that is really useful for uh, the uh, climate resilience then what are the policy needs so policy needs what why you are telling it is initially also i told so this watershed management what we have really initiated let us concentrate and see that our climate resiliency is through this watershed program so this is some of the things we have done uh, ourselves sir just two minutes i will take and this is the a uh, from farmer side that means indigenous knowledge even we are thinking climate change even the our local people also they are their own science they also think that there is some changes in climate knowledge the people they watch the weather closely and know the signs smell the rain smell the air tell the direction of the wind the, the way animals act so these are incredible experts on their environment so we have to respect the indigenous knowledge with the people available for the country and so if we take those indigenous knowledge so we have to take farmers ngos government agencies research institutes administration and policy makers. so that will be a complete package to address the climate change so this is the type if it is a very really a very good farmer a neb farmer so you will have very uh, difficult problems so if he is really a very smart farmer he can take up the climate change and he is uh, he will have a better future so these are practical approaches evaluate the benefits of building the resilient system and it is increasingly important to retain water within water set and robust adaptation practice locally will sustain the mitigation strategy so we should always go for a good and sustainable adaptation practice and indirectly it will be towards mitigation thank you sir